What's up YouTube, this is Kai Pokemon and welcome back to another video. It's been a long while since I've actually made a video. Um, my work in real life has just been super duper busy. So um, yeah, I simply don't have the, don't have that low strength to, um, to make a lot of these videos. So, um, but you know, I'm actually getting used to uh, my current work schedule and I think that I will eventually slowly roll out more and more video again. But that doesn't actually stop me from looking, observing, and still sticking really, really close to the Pokemon card market. You guys can hear my voice. I've been talking all days, uh, and you can hear that it's a little raspy, so bear with me. Ah, today, I really want to bring you guys uh, a news about uh, eBay. eBay is actually going to start its own authentication system for uh, Pokemon cards, or actually for any sort of trading card games including things such as you know your watch your sneakers uh you know basketball tennis cards you know any cards that you can really think about um i really want to address on how i feel and how i think that this authentication system or authentication service will impact the trading card market as ebay is one of the largest platform in which people buy and sell these sort of pokemon cards um, but before we get into it, I really want to, oh, I really want you to subscribe, like, comment, and let me know what you think, whether this authentication service by eBay is actually good or not. All right, so I really want to bring out um, this question of why I don't personally like using eBay and what I've been using uh, for a while. I've been using a lot of StockX uh, when purchasing a lot of my seal products, especially some seal products that uh, I tend to collect over time. For example, the Japanese Golden Box uh, 25th anniversary one. I've bought quite a number of them. Um, and, you know, there are limitations to that service, but, you know, StockX has been quite um, competitive i would say the price on socket has been very competitive when i'm trying to buy some of these products um whereas on the other hand i've had many many bad experience with ebay um experience such as you know my order is a pre-order but they suggest that you know i i need to ship it even though i marked it as pre-order uh so they lower my ranking they limit my you know amount that i can post each month these sort of stuff it's very difficult to reach any customer services um and sending cards from hong kong to the us sometimes some buyer will say that hey you know it's from hong kong it must be china it must be fake cards so I've got a lot of those as well. So I just really don't prefer using eBay, you know, generally because eBay just really sucks most of the time. Um, as a buyer, do I buy from eBay? Well, sometimes I do buy from eBay, but, um, you know, rarely buy any single cards because I just feel like the quality cannot be ensured. And the only cards I buy on eBay are pretty much graded slabs, especially um, when I was trying and attempting to complete my PSA 10 Hidden Fates collection. Um, so that's how I feel eBay. I just don't like using it uh, simply because of the hassle and things I have. Like I have to deal with returns and everything else. And then, you know, I, I listed it as this and then the, the, the buyer says, oh, hey, you know, it's not what I thought. You know, I thought this was another language, even though the picture is obviously in English or in Chinese already. So that's the reason. Now, how do I think about this authentication system? Well, currently this authentication system, if you guys haven't noticed, it is that eBay is pairing up with CGC, which is going to provide a trading cards authentication. Essentially, if the buyer and the seller are both in the USA and the product that you're trying to buy is, or the good that you're trying to buy is 750 US dollar and above, it would automatically, free of charge, get sent to the authenticator. So for example, if I was the seller selling a $750 card, I don't send it directly to the buyer, I, sell it, I send it to the authenticator. The authenticator will then pay for the shipping fee to the buyer 
Whereas for me, I would have to pay the shipping fee to the authenticator. So that is how it would work. Now, currently it's only limited within the US. So me being in Hong Kong, unless I use a proxy service uh, in the States, I would not benefit from this. Now, how does this service actually differ from uh, the one that is what, you know, StockX is doing? Well, StockX is mainly used uh, for sealed products. Whereas I think that this one is quite interesting because you can actually do raw cards. They try to authenticate raw cards and to compare the condition of the cards with the description, as well as to demonstrate that that card is actually a genuine real Pokemon card. So I think that it is going to be, it is going to make a change, but is it going to make a big change? We'll have to see how that goes because uh, the change is simply that people shy away from buying single cards all the time because they're scared, they're worried about the quality. They're worried that, you know, what people say is near mint is not near mint um, and so on and so on. So that's why a lot of people turn to buying uh graded cards because that grading is not simply about whether you get a 9 or you get a 10 but you can guarantee some sort of quality some sort of um, insurance about the quality of that card I mean if you're buying if you're paying for a you know PSA 8 PSA 9 you know that card is definitely going to be near mint most of the time so I think you know it, it is going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this will affect graded cards and i think in the short run it won't affect graded cards um, because i mean some people still want to buy that psa 10 they really want to get that 10 but in the long run um, if people realize that buying a psa 10 you have to pay a much higher premium than to buy a raw card that is going to guarantee uh, from your from the time you buy it, it looks on the image like a PSA 10 to you. People are more likely to buy that authenticated or the, the raw card, which will then be authenticated. Um, and then you can actually send it off to PSA and get that 10 without paying the extra premium. So I think that that's what's going to happen. I think eventually when people get used to it, when people are comfortable with it, and when people become confident in this authenticating card surface by eBay, you know, we're going to see dip in the PSA 10 card price. And we are going to see dip especially for the newer sets because traditionally, you know, what a lot of people do is that, you know, they try to get this set as early as possible, open the rare cards, send it to PSA using Express, get it back, put it up for auction on eBay, and, you know, to get the best profit. But I think that with the authentication services, eventually, if it builds enough confidence, this kind of scalping behavior um, of quick turnaround, quick money, I think it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to decrease. I don't think it's going to be as effective. So that's about that. But um, how does eBay build confidence? Well, eBay will build confidence by running this for a long time. The question is how to make this sustainable. I would think that eBay will eventually uh, charge the seller an extra fees for authenticating. And I think that um, the fees is going to be a percentage. So if you have a very high tier pricing product, 750 and about, which that's the only thing that offering now, uh, you know, you might have to pay a much smaller percentage than something that is like what $250 or about, um, which they said that they're likely to expand into. So um, I think we'll have to see. And I think that it really depends on whether eBay will open this service up uh, internationally. Um, because I do think that there is a lot of international seller willing to pay an extra percentage to get the cards sold off into the States. Because for people like me in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, in Malaysia, in Singapore, it is very difficult to move some of these single cards. And you know, that, that's another reason why I don't usually sell single cards. It's just that it, it is super difficult to move. The shipping cost is expensive. And you know, if I have to deal with some return, 
uh, I would have to pay an extra cost in shipping it back. So, you know, it, it's just too much of a hustle. So that's why yeah, I really don't want to do this right now. But um, if eBay does open the service up internationally, I think that um, it will. It will definitely make a dent um, into the current uh, TCG market system. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I want to present to you today. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Would you, what would you think about this authentication service? Is it a good direction or is this a bad direction or it's just much more of a, a gimmicky thing? Well, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. This is Collect Pokemon. Bye-bye.